A fragment of Halley's Comet fell on a house in New Jersey. Last Monday, an inconspicuous-looking piece of rock fell through the roof into the bedroom of a house in Hopewell Township, New Jersey, USA. The researchers' analysis showed that the rock could be a 4.5 billion-year-old fragment of Halley's Comet. A meteorite fell on Mrs. Susie Kopp's house. Fortunately, no one was in the building at the time of its impact. The 10 by 15 centimeters space debris hit the house around 1 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time, piercing through the roof and into one of the bedrooms. I touched it because I thought it was just a stone. But it was warm, Cop told CBS News. Authorities and scientists continue to study the space rock. However, the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Derek Pitts, argues that the shard comes from the Eta Aquarids meteor shower, which occurs roughly between April 19 and May 29 each year. During the peak of the phenomenon, around May 6, dozens of shooting stars can be observed in the sky per hour. Most of it burns up in the atmosphere. The Eta Aquarids are rocky debris left behind by one of history's most famous cosmic objects, Halley's Comet. According to NASA, it becomes visible from Earth every 75 to 79 years. It will fly by our planet again around 2061. If Pitt's theory is correct, the Hopewell Township meteorite may be 4 to 5 billion years old. Meteors enter Earth's atmosphere all the time, and most of them burn up there. In very rare cases, space debris causes damage to buildings. Situations like this when meteorites hit homes and are found by their occupants are unusual and very rare in history, says Pitts. For example, in 2015, a meteorite weighing 712 grams hit a house in San Carlos, Uruguay, destroying a bed and a TV. In 2021, a British Columbia woman woke up to a loud noise and found a fist-sized rock between her pillows. It turned out to be a fragment of a meteorite that exploded in the air. In November 2022, a meteor strike may have caused a house fire in California. Small meteorites were also reported to have crashed into buildings in Sumatra in 2020, Connecticut in 1982, and Auckland in 2004. Fortunately, no one was injured in these incidents. The only known case of a person being hit by space debris was in Alabama in 1954, when a 3.8 kilograms rock hit a woman's house, bounced off her radio and hit her leg leaving a large bruise. The meteorite event that caused the most damage occurred in February 2013. A space rock, estimated to be 18 meters in diameter, fell into Earth's atmosphere and exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia. According to NASA, the resulting shock wave shattered windows and damaged buildings, injuring more than 1,600 people. The world's first surgery on the brain of a child in the womb. A team of doctors in Boston successfully performed a novel operation on the fetal brain in the womb. Surgeons decided to intervene to treat a rare disease known as Galen's vein malformation. This is the first operation of this type in the world. The success of American doctors gives new hope for the treatment of children with severe developmental defects. For the first time, Doctors have surgically corrected a defective blood vessel in a baby's brain while it was still in the womb. The birth took place in mid-March. The girl was discharged from the hospital a few weeks later and since then she has not required any medications or other procedures. When I first heard her cry, I just... I have no words to describe how I felt, 
said the girl's mother, Kenyatta Coleman of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It was the most beautiful moment when I could take her in my arms, look at her and then hear her cry, the woman added to CNN. In a publication published in the journal Stroke, the scientists described in detail the procedure that was used in ongoing clinical trials. They aim to find a new way to treat Galen's vein malformation, VOGM, a rare disease that affects the blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to the brain. Malformation of the vein of Galen prevents the arteries in the brain from connecting to the capillaries that help slow blood flow. Instead, the arteries carry blood to the veins at the base of the brain, where it flows under high pressure. This can lead to heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, damage and loss of brain tissue, or hydrocephalus. According to the estimates of the American Heart Association, AHA, VOGM is diagnosed in 1 in 60,000 people. Fetuses. Standard postnatal treatment consists in blocking arterial and venous connections within the malformation. However, this procedure often did not reverse the changes in the fetal heart or prevent impairment or life-threatening brain damage. Doctors at Boston Children's Hospital and Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston are conducting research to help treat VOGM earlier while the baby is still in the womb. The new procedure involves fetal surgery to reduce aggressive blood flow. In total, about 20 children are to undergo the innovative operation. Kenyatta Coleman's daughter was the first. In the first treated case, we were delighted with the effects. The symptoms usually present after birth of children with VOGM simply did not appear, says the lead author of the report, Professor. Darren Orbach of the AHA, Associate Director of the Cerebrovascular Surgery and Interventions Center at Boston Children's Hospital. We are pleased to report that at six weeks old, the baby is doing remarkably well. No medication, eating normally, gaining weight and is back home. There are no signs of a negative impact of the disease on the brain, says Orbach. During the operation, scientists used a technique called ultrasound-guided embolization. Kenyatta Coleman and her daughter had the procedure at 34 weeks pregnant. VOGM was diagnosed in the fetus just after an ultrasound at 30 weeks. After the procedure, the mother noticed a leak of amniotic fluid, so the doctors decided to induce labor two days later. The newborn did not require any cardiovascular support or surgery after birth. However, he was monitored in the intensive care unit for several weeks. It's important that we continue testing. We need to evaluate the safety and effectiveness of the procedure in other patients, says Professor Orbach. Our research may change the approach to the treatment of Galen's vein malformation. We want to fix the defect before birth and prevent heart failure, not try to reverse it after birth, explains the scientist.